defending an undisputed champion at light welterweight. Floyd Mayweather, a five-weight world champion, and the fight's taking place here in the capital of boxing, in this feverish atmosphere. This is something we haven't seen for generations, I think. And it's worth talking about the money they're going to get. I understand that Ricky Hatton, the minimum he gets from this is £5 million, but then there are cuts on the pay-per-view, could go up to about £10 million, and Mayweather will get even more than that. And I suppose it's looking at these scenes that, that we see ahead of us, that the fighters shaking hands, and, and even Hopkins and Calzaghe, good-naturedly enough, chewing the fat, as it were, on the stage. They're all smiles. It reflects well on this sport, which is a very special sport. And the behaviour and the conduct between the two fighters really is exemplary, isn't it? Well, that's right. I mean, there's a lot of phony ballyhoo goes on around fights and bad-mouthing, trash-talking. It probably doesn't do the, the sport too many favours with the wider public. But, you know, boxers between themselves uh, away from the sport there's a unity a fusion of spirit among them and they they know the business they know the trade they're the people who go in there they know what it takes and they respect each other because of that looking at oscar de la hoya on the left there he's the promoter here as well of course do you think he'll be looking around at all these these english fans that have traveled here seeing the dollar signs do you think maybe in his heart as a businessman he'd prefer a hat and win in this well, I think he definitely would, and I think he makes no bones about that. And, of course, one of the, uh, the stories we've been hearing this week is that Oscar De La Hoya, who's Ricky Hatton's promoter, could fight, face his own fighter <laughs> on May the 5th, maybe even at Wembley in England on May the 5th next year. But it's a big if, because it all depends on what happens here, and there are other options for De La Hoya. But, I mean, the problem there is what weight would they do that at? De La Hoya is a, a light middleweight who isn't getting any lighter, and Hatton really is probably at the outer limit here, uh, as heavy as Welter. We've got the national anthems early, haven't we? Uh, Tom Jones, I understand, uh, singing the anthem uh, for Hatton on fight night, but God save the Queen belting out here. Amazing crowds, really is quite something. Well, it's a bit of celebrities everywhere, because David Beckham is going to be at ringside supporting Ricky Hatton. They've actually put back the Spice Girls concert <laughs> over the road till 10 o'clock, and that will allow uh, Beckham to watch the fight out. When I say 10 o'clock, that is American time, just so you're getting confused. It's a, it'll be about 4 a.m., of course, uh, back in Britain. But um, I think all kinds of celebrities are there, are footballers who have come over there. Good luck messages from everybody. The Spice Girls wanted to go and say hello to Hatton today before the fight and wish him luck. But quite rightly, they said, no, they've got to lock him away now. They've got to get his mind on the job in hand. Moments away from the big fight we in now, just to remind everyone, we've just heard Mayweather has just arrived, we believe he's just behind that curtain, behind the podium, so proceedings proper should be getting away, underway any minute now, remember it's £147, 10.5 stone that the two fighters have to make on those set of scales today. If they don't make the weight, of course, in the unlikely event that they don't, because both men are consummate professionals, and at this weight level, they're both pretty comfortable at making that weight. They will have two hours uh, in which to take the excess weight off uh, to ensure that the fight goes ahead. But we don't anticipate any problems in that regard whatsoever. The only thing, of course, is that Ricky Hatton got it wrong, didn't he? The last time he moved up to welterweight to fight Luis Calazzo, they, they thought he put on too much weight between the time of the weigh-in and the fight, and that's why that's right. it was explained that he was sluggish. This time, I think they've learned the lesson. Um, they don't have to take his weight down from the ten and a half stone he is here back down to to junior welterweight. They can just leave him at uh, ten and a half stone. He'll put on about another half a stone eating tomorrow. Get in the ring at about eleven stone, and I think Mayweather will be about the same as that. I think that's right. I had a conversation actually with Kerry Case, his nutritionist, who explained what the procedure was when Ricky Hatton fought at ten stone. Around that time, when he had to make the ten stone limit, Hatton would be around ten stone six or ten stone seven two days before the fight. They would then do what's known in boxing parlance as drying out. He wouldn't take any fluids for the last 36 hours or so before the win, and that would get his weight down to the 10 stone limit. This time, they've prepared him for 10 stone six. Well, we have a look at some events here. There's a, a bit of a face off going on. I'll just enter that between uh, Calzaghe and Hopkins. They're not even, for, they're doing this for free. They're not, uh, they should be doing this for money, shouldn't they, Ian? Yeah, but it's, um, it's all part of the hoopla. And, of course, what will decide whether we see that fight is whether the money is right, particularly for Hopkins, I suspect, with uh, home box office. But doesn't he look fantastic? Bernard Hopkins, 42, 42 years yes. of age. <laughs> that is, yeah, it is quite remarkable. Just to finish that point about Hatton, this time 
He's prepared for a 10 stone 7 weight that he has to make. He's been around that sort of figure for most of this week. We reckon he was maybe 10 stone 7, 10 stone 8 during this week. So he hasn't had to go through that process of dehydration in the run-up to this. So he will, as you say, probably put on a few pounds after that coming in about Craig, I think there's been a little bit of a problem, you know, because I think he hit the weight a little too soon. He was on weight three weeks before. He's right. straining at the leash for this fight, trained so hard. They've had to hold him back a couple of days in the last three weeks. Of course, the danger is he leaves a little bit in the gym. They don't want that. That's right, that's what I've heard. Three times they had to hold him back in training, but you can understand that. As Kerry Case told me the other day, the adrenaline has been flying with Ricky Hatton. And when you see the, the, the scale of this event, just looking at all these world champions, all these world champions on stage just for a way, it, it gives you some idea of, of the, the level of this fight, the level this fight's been made up, and just the sheer importance in boxing history. Well, it's not the York Hall Bethnal Green, is it, Craig? <laughs> it certainly isn't, no. Have you ever seen any, is that many world champions at a weigh-in, not to be weighed in? Well, it's certainly a, certainly a big who's who of, of current champions up there, but this is one of those fights, as we were saying, that, that everybody wants to see. Backstage at the moment, the two fighters will have arrived. Yeah. They're coordinating this, uh, just to put everybody in the picture, for American television That's right. needs. It's going out in America on uh, ESPN, I think it is. So they're going to show it live. That shows how big the fight is in the States. I've heard that the pay-per-view sales over here are way, way ahead of what they thought. Now then, uh, we're starting to see the Mayweather team. Mayweather belts coming in there. Yeah. Yes, he's premiering his five world title belts at most of the media opportunities this week. Yeah, they need a juggernaut to bring to take all those belts <laughs> from his house into the way. Don't they? It's a little reminder this to Hatton. Look what we've done. Look how many belts we've got. I don't think Ricky Hatton's going to be remotely impressed by that. I think he just wants those belts. That's the incentive for him. And that is also part of the dynamic of this fight. Perhaps this fight isn't a career-defining fight for Floyd Mayweather. It can damage his legacy, certainly, but for Hatton, this fight can take him to a new level. Maybe the motivation lies with him. I think you've hit a key point there, you know. I really do, because for Ricky Ladies Hatton, gentlemen, he becomes the, the best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world the simply because he's beaten the man who holds that particular Marco accolade Antonio at the moment. For Mayweather, Barrera. the bigger win, really, was beating Oscar De La Hoya last time as we see Marco Antonio Barrera arrive. He's a man who punctured a British dream when he beat Nassim Mohamed over here. He certainly did. That was a huge upset. I think that the odds for this narrowing all the time. I don't think we can talk about Hatton win as necessarily an upset. Marco Antonio Barrera, of course, a long-standing friend of uh, Ricky Hatton and, and travelled to Sheffield to see him, didn't he, against Carlos Mauser? Yeah, they're good mates. They're very good mates. And uh, I think he's even accompanied Hatton out into the, the ring. They go back a long way. Uh, Ricky Hatton and Marco Antonio Barrera. He's certainly rooting for the hitman here. Yeah, I remember meeting Ricky Hatton for the first time as an 18-year-old. He used to have that terrible haircut, you remember, back in the days. But uh, I remember his trainer, Billy Graham, comparing him to, to the great Mexicans. He, he thought he would be part of that tradition almost. Julio Cesar Chavez, he reckoned he looked like as he was throwing his shots. And I think that he's tapped into that over the years and, and refined it. And, and I guess he's in that sort of class. You can rank him now up with those great Mexicans that, that sort of fought up to like welterweight, welterweight level. Yeah, of course, Hatton's biggest hero is Roberto Duran. And that's an interesting one because he, of course, as a brawler, like Hatton will be in the, in the big fight tomorrow, beat Sugar Ray Leonard, a great slick stylist, and he did it because he made Sugar Ray Leonard back in 1980 fight the wrong kind of fight, dragged him into a trench war. If Hatton can do that with Mayweather tomorrow, he might just be in business. Yeah, that's going to be tough, though. Mayweather's so experienced at this level, although he's been, uh, and his camp have been talking down at and derogatory comments suggesting he's, he's little more than a, a club fighter than, than an inflated record. The Hatton camp sense, and if you you speak sensibly to most of the Mayweather camp. They've done their homework for this. They seem to know a lot of Ricky Hatton's fights in pretty close detail, don't they? I think they have done their homework for this. Yeah, but he, he tried to claim, didn't he, Mayweather, that he doesn't watch tapes of his opponents, and then he comes and does a press conference and says, ah, Ricky Hatton, he makes one big, big mistake. Yes. And I felt like saying that. How do you know you don't watch tapes of him? <laughs> Any sense? You, what, 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 what do you think that big, big mistake might be? He didn't really elaborate much on that one. Well, he wasn't going to elaborate, was he? He's, he wasn't going to uh, give away a weakness that he'd spotted in the way Hatton attacks. But it, it's a fact that Ricky Hatton does get hit a bit too much. In fairness, that's because he fights in the zone. He's right in front of you all the time. And if you're there, you are going to get hit. And he says here he's going to make himself oblivious to the pain, uh, to walk through the punches. Let's see what Michael Buffer's announcing. Tomorrow now. night.
here at the MGM Grand. Golden Boy Promotions and Mayweather Promotions, along with the sponsors of Tecate, Cerveza with an Attitude, Rockstar Energy Drink, Party Like a Rockstar, Michael and Southwest Airlines, Southwest, the symbol of freedom.